Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the modal filter to create all sorts of interesting sounds. So in the last videos, I did them on physical modeling, and this is actually another way you can do physical modeling. The modal filter is a different way, and it has some like good points and some pros and cons versus the resonator. So let's get into it. So if we go in here, I'm just going to open up the modal filter right here. And if we look at it, it has some things you probably recognize, some things you don't. I'll go over those in a second. Uh, so basically, what a modal filter is, is it's a series of bandpass filters. So there's many of them in a row, and in this case, they're all set up uh, according to the harmonic series. And you can control them here uh, under count, and you can go all the way from 1, which I don't know why you do that, but you could, and all the way up to 32. And you can control the resonance of the bandpass filters. The order controls the like order of the filter. So I think one is 12 decibels per octave. 12 decibels per octave, I should say. Uh, two, I think, is probably 24 decibels per octave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just like any other bandpass filter. Uh, distribution I'll get into in a second. Uh, the pitch should be pretty self-explanatory. It's like any of the other parts. And if you go down here for the harmonics... This lets you control which harmonics are active or inactive, etc. So you can turn them on and off, adjust the volume, detuning, width, etc. So you see here I just have three that are working right now. And if we press a key, you hear nothing. You're probably thinking, oh, why? And the reason is you need an exciter to excite this. So let's do this just like before. We have drum synthesizer in, in. If you saw my first video on physical modeling, what I did was basically I took this, I went into the editor and uh, go into oscillator one. Actually, let's pop this out here so we can just see it in a larger size. I'm going to move this all the way up, move this all the way down, make sure this is on sign. Pull this down just to make the slope a little bit faster. Pull the envelope all the way up, make sure there's nothing going on with the band pass filters. And now I'm just going to change the length. That's one of the most important parts. So change to about 15. Okay. So let's turn off the modal filter for a second. And let's just hear what that sounds like. Just sounds like a, a hit of something. Okay. Now let's turn the modal filter on. And let's see what this sounds like with just these three. Okay. Let's turn it up a little bit so you can just hear it a little bit louder. So, as you heard, it sounds almost like a like a child xylophone or something. And that's the physical modeling. That's the really cool thing about this, is you can adjust these however you want, and you get these sounds that are kind of realistic. If I hit it lighter, hit it harder. And as I go up, it also responds fairly realistically. Go up in pitch, I mean. And you notice if I play up here, there's very little sustain. And if I play it down much lower like this, it has a much longer sustain, just like you'd expect from a real instrument. So now let's go and hear the resonance. So if I bring this up, it will change the sound. So depending on how you have the resonance, it will make probably a big difference here. So here it will have just a little bit of sustain in the middle. If I move it down, it will have almost none, almost like it's muted. If I move it all the way up, it will get more sustain. Sounds very clear like this. Almost sounds like an electric piano or an organ. So that part's really cool, but you're probably thinking, okay, well, you only have three harmonics activated. What happens if they are all activated? And I can show you that fairly quickly. So let's go here and just. Do this like this, all harmonics, just a preset I had in there. Let me turn the volume down a bit. Resonance to half. And you see here we have all 32 harmonics. So let's see what this sounds like. Turn the resonance up a bit. Now 
Now, with all these harmonics, it almost sounds like a, I don't know, maybe a string or something. And so, depending on the harmonics, you'll get all sorts of different tones, and we can mess with this even more. So, let's try something else instead of all harmonics like this. Let's try just even harmonics. Here we go. Turn the resonance up. Turn the gain up. Hear what this sounds like. So that's kind of an interesting sound. I can hear more of the octaves in there. And let's try the same thing with odd harmonics. Turn this up, turn this up just a little bit. Here. So odd harmonics are very interesting because I believe that's the type of sound you get out of a, I believe it's a closed tube. I forget if it's open or closed, but it has that kind of sound. Like maybe, I guess it's open tube, like if you're hitting like a PVC pipe or something. So I think that sounds really interesting. And there's all these harmonics here, but sometimes, like I said, you don't want all of them. Don't think of this as like a, a better or worse knob. Think of it as kind of a, a different timbre knob. So if I move this down here to like 10, You can hear the timbre of this really change just depending on how the amount of harmonics I had here. But uh, let's go back to the all harmonics. Have the count up, move this down just a little bit. And I'll show you what the other things do. So the order. So now if I have this, let me just play this. You hear what that sounds like. Now if I move it up to two with the resonance up, you'll hear there's a little bit more of a delay with the attack. Wait a second, it doesn't have that sharp sound. Let's try it here at three. All the way up at, let's say six. Okay, so that's one of the problems with increasing this, but there's actually a way we can get rid of this. So let's try it with three. Also keep in mind with something like this that moving the order up uses more CPU. But using the distribution will help us get back some of that sharp sound. So let me just play this and hear it. And so using this specific exciter, you're probably like, what's the difference if I turn the resonance down or up or if I use an order one and three? It doesn't seem that different. But let's actually change this to something else. Like, let's say, noise generator. So now what I'm going to do is send some noise through here. I'll put it back here and turn the distribution down. So let's hear it with the resonance all the way up. Okay, now let's turn the resonance down. So you can hear, with the resonance down, the sound of the white noise comes through. But if we change the order, you'll hear less of the white noise. Let's try three. You hear more of a pure tone as opposed to first order. The first order you hear more of that like hissing sound of the white noise. So that's why you might want to change the order. And it might be even better if I take this down and use like envelope one here. And instead of using this uh, pitch drop with a sine wave, let's just try it with white noise. So change this to zero, move this down. Let's Take this like 20 or 30 or so, like this. That's maybe a little bit higher, like this. Now let's hear what this sounds like. It should sound almost the same. So this is another way if you don't want to use white noise. But if I turn the resonance down. You 
you can hear that white noise come through and that's actually something that's common with real physical instruments so that's something you can use and you can try it with different orders like this so you might actually hear that with a real musical instrument so that's something you can mess around with and play with if you want uh, maybe a few other things I might want to show here. Let's turn this down just a bit. Like this 16. Now, I showed how you can change the volumes and things, and you might want to do that. But another thing you might want to do is change the detune. So... Here, I can move these all around, I'll play something, and I'll, I'll slowly change it for you and let you hear it. Let me turn this off and just have it with straight white noise, and you'll hear how it sounds when I change everything around. So now it sounds like something you hear in like a horror movie. And of course we can you know, mess with the uh, attack or release or anything else in there if we want. Uh, let's change this back and turn this back on, the envelope, and hear what this sounds like. So now we're getting like a bell sound, which is really cool. So by detuning these you can get more of a bell sound. And what I probably want to do is to keep the pitch tracking working well is I probably want the lower harmonics or lower partials I should say uh, less detuned so just a little bit here and then as it moves up do a little bit more this here move these a little bit higher move this up move that up like this and this should sound like a bell but it should also keep the pitch tracking fairly well And so, of course, I can also mess with the different volumes. If I wanted to do just odd harmonics, I could do the same thing just by turning them off. So this is with the all the harmonics on. Now let's just turn off the even harmonics like this. So you can get all sorts of different sounds with this, and of course, as I said before, or I hope I said before, mess with the exciters to try to get different sounds. So here, I'll go back to the sine sweep, and so now I have it all the way at 10,000 hertz, but if I move it down, you'll get a less harsh or a less uh, high end in the uh, signal that's excited. So I think you get the idea. You can come up with all sorts of different like bell sounds or anything. If I turn this down a little bit more, it almost sounds like Gamelon, or it should. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this. Also remember this responds to MPE. So if you have an MPE controller, you can control all of this however you like. Uh, there's lots of randomization things. And there's one more part. I'll show you the structure, which is really, really cool next time. This can do a lot. So you're probably wondering, like, hey, is there anything else you can do with this? But you can do a lot with it. Okay, and just to give you an overview of why you might use the modal filter instead of the resonator, 
the modal filter allows you to actually adjust the volume of all these harmonics fairly easily. Not only the volume, but also the amount that they're detuned. So this can make like a big difference in uh, the sound you're trying to make. So if you're trying to make a purely harmonic sound, like most instruments, like let's say a flute or a guitar string or any stringed instrument, I would really use the resonator. That's probably going to be what you're going to uh, get the most bang for your buck and the most efficient CPU usage out of. But if you're using something that's more percussive, the modal filter can actually be better because you can actually tune the different harmonics however you like. And I'll show you some other cool things with the structure you can do later. But I hope this gives you an idea of how you can use this. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done that. Check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. And until next time, see you.